Yes, that title is not clickbait. I paid 644 US originally for this gaming laptop with that spec. So a 144 hertz screen, a NVIDIA GTX 1650, 9th gen Intel CPU, 256 gigabyte PCIe SSD from Samsung. But is it any good? It's got an RGB keyboard as well. And of course that screen 16.1 inch with the 144 hertz is something I haven't seen before. The lid doesn't have any ugly logos on it, but it does have these gamer accents which does light up with the backlight, this blue that we have here. It's plastic, the whole build of this laptop is a painted plastic. And when I press down here, there's a little bit of flex there, but I don't believe that it is gonna press up against the keyboard with books or something in a backpack. The thickness of the laptop is a little bit chunky here. So it's 36 millimeters. That's including the rubber feet. That's the maximum point here right at the back. We have a mini display out, HDMI 1.4a out, type C, this is USB 3.1, and then another two USB 3.1 type A ports. Then on the right hand side, Kensington lock slot DC in there and a gigabit LAN port. USB 2, so this is only really good for plugging in, say, a mouse or the wireless transmitter for it. Dedicated mic in and audio out, and then an SD card reader. Now, this does support ultra high speed cards, which is good. It's not crippled to USB 2 speeds. Along the back, two exit vents and a removable battery. It's been a while since I've seen one of these. Now this is only a 47 watt hour battery, so gaming it's only gonna last approximately one hour. If you're on the integrated Intel GPU, then you may be able to get somewhere around three hours. As expected for a gaming laptop, battery life is very poor. And the weight of it is 2.4 kilos, so it's not the lightest laptop out there to be lugging around. Accessing the internals is not that difficult. You've just got a few screws to remove and this inner panel can be removed from the bottom because you still got the outer panels you can see still here and various other screws to remove if you wanted to go any further. But maintenance wise, this is gonna be very good. So you've got access to the fans, the vents for cleaning it so you can blow the dust out or whatever. Now look at this. This is one of the reasons why I bought this laptop to take this risk is because it's very interesting to me because you can upgrade everything on this apart from the GPU, which is great. So the RAM, it comes with eight gigabytes pre-installed. This is DDR4. 2,666 megahertz have gone with, a data proper brand, our SSD right here, PCIe 256 gigabytes, doesn't have any operating system installed, and also a second SSD slot here. So if you happen to have, say, a two terabyte SATA 3 one, you can put that in here, 22 by 80 size, but you can also resize it to the 2242 and the 2260. And also, a 2.5 inch bay right here, which of course is not occupied. So you could put a SSD in here or even just an old spindle hard drive, a four terabyte one. So the wireless card, this is also upgradable. You can see the two antennas right here. They've got the 9462, that's Intel's wireless AC with Bluetooth 4 on there. But if you want Bluetooth 5 and you want a much faster wireless card, then I highly recommend buying and installing the Intel wireless AC 9260. Now you can get those from AliExpress as well, just like this laptop, and they are normally selling for only about 10 US dollars, so well worth it. And here you can see part of the cooling, so this is where the CPU is, right here, the GPU will be there, so that's the GTX 1650, and you can upgrade the CPU, so if you're not happy with the Coffee Lake 9th Gen, uh, the Pentium Gold series, which is only just dual core, then you could upgrade this if the buyer supports it. I believe it would probably support, I would say, at least the Core i3s. And you're probably better off if you were gonna upgrade to get one of them, because that's got the additional two cores. And because I do happen to have some RAM lying about here that's in my drawer for reviews, I'm going to upgrade it to 16 gigabytes of RAM here, so at least I'm running dual channel. That's gonna give me the best memory bandwidth. So the display, as you can see, the bezels aren't actually that bad. Now this is a 16.1 inch screen, which is the first time I have seen uh, this particular size. And because of the slimmer bezels, it's still about the same size, really, this laptop as, say, a traditional 15.6 inch gaming laptop you'll get. Now the hinge on it, it's stiff. There's no real problems. There's a little bit of flex with the screen and pressing down on top of the lid, but overall no problems. Now the refresh rate, 144 hertz. So this is very quick and something that you would not expect 
especially for the price of this laptop. And yes, it is running at the proper 166 hertz. You can see straight away just how fluid and smooth everything really is. Now looking at images, they do look good. Overall, for a gaming laptop, I think this is a good screen, but I will, in my final review of this, of course, measure the color space. Maximum brightness, I have measured. So it's an anti glare screen, and it pumps out a maximum 440 almost lux, which is actually very decent and good. So one of the reasons this laptop is so cheap, or at least was so cheap, is because it does not ship with any operating system on there whatsoever. So you have to make a USB pen drive for Windows and then install all of the drivers yourself, which they do give you if you ask them for it. There's a link to in the description of this video of where you can download all the drivers. And it's not hard to do, setting it up is very quick and no problem so far, there's no drivers that are missing. I have everything and that's all been installed. And in fact, you don't need actually everything. Now it does come with this control center that you can install on it, which is pretty much a must if you want to control that uh, RGB keyboard, change the colors on there. There's some good things in here too that I like as well, that they've got, well, power modes as well. This is pretty straightforward you get with a lot of manufacturing, so it'll limit the performance, but try and keep probably the fan noise down and keep it a little bit quieter. But you can control that fan noise right here with the fan speed control. Now, I'm pretty sure I have seen this before. So this is not original. This software they're using, I think, is from uh, Clevo or Sage or someone else. I'm pretty sure I've seen it. So you can adjust here. They've got automatic temperatures. You can set an offset here in percent. And you've got maximum fan mode. So this is if you're pushing it really hard or you're in a very hot environment gaming or something like that. And then custom fan profiles, which I really do like. So you can tweak this to your own preference there to try and keep the fan noise at a minimum. And here are the controls for the keyboard's RGB lighting. So there's no separate zones here. It's just the whole keyboard that you can control. It's very straightforward. So you can just go in here on the map, changing into what color you want. And there is uh, no strobing effects. There's no wave effect. None of that. It's a basic keyboard, but at least we do have the backlighting on it. And control there, as you can see, for the brightness. So I got a bit of a shock when I first saw this keyboard and thought, what the? But it's a keyboard protector that they have supplied and put on top of it, okay? Because when I saw this, I thought, that is a horrible looking keyboard. And when you remove it, then you can see the backlit keyboard. So the key travel and the keycaps themselves, backlit. Uh, there's no bounce or flex for them. That's actually an okay keyboard, comfortable to type on. And you can see we've got plenty of screen controls, controls there for the brightness of the backlit keyboard and print screen, full size arrow keys, the number pad there. Really, I feel this is an okay keyboard. Now the palm rest, made of plastic. Everything is this painted plastic here and the touchpad, the surface of it is okay. It's not using Windows precision drivers. It's using Synaptics drivers and it's okay. It's an average touchpad. What I don't like is the buttons. So we've got the left and right buttons there. They have a very poor feel to them. They don't really feel high quality to me, but most people will probably be using a mouse. I know most gamers would be anyway. Who games with a touchpad? You can't really. So for that, it's okay, but it's just, they really should have given us better mouse buttons on this. They just have a real horrible feel to them. You can see we've got status LEDs right down here. Now, if you benchmark, so as expected, Cinebench is not wonderful because this is just a dual core CPU. The maximum turbo is just 3.8 gigahertz, which isn't bad, but it's just the two cores and the four threads in total. So it only gets a score of 351 CB, putting it uh, right down the end of the scale here, as you can see. So not great for 3D performance. So if you're gonna be doing 3D modeling, things like that, or you're gonna be encoding video, this really is not the CPU for it. But for gaming, I think it's going to be at least okay, but it still might be a slight bottleneck to this uh, particular GPU. So this is the Fire Strike score, and I am benchmarking the SSD, as you can see right here. So this is a Samsung PM981, as far as I can tell. But when you look at those speeds so far with the reads, you can see that, yes, uh, there's a very fast drive here. So no bottlenecks here. It's basically like an Evo 970. And here's the final score, as you can see. So the writes aren't quite as fast, but this is still really good. This is not going to bottleneck the system at all. And as expected for a 256 gigabyte drive, if you've got the 512 or one terabyte drive of this, 
then you would get write speeds similar to reads. So I will have a gaming review of this up, or I will include it in my full review, a lot more games, a lot more on the performance of it. But Witcher here, you can see has a few frame dips. This is 1080p on the medium preset, which looks good, and we're getting over 60 frames per second. So it seems that even though that GPU, sorry, the CPU is not powerful, the GPU is certainly holding its own here, and it looks like, I believe that most games, 1080p, medium, high settings, are going to be perfectly fine and playable. And that is, of course, what we want to see with this a gaming laptop. So taking advantage of the 144Hz screen, that's going to be for older titles, lighter engines, things like League of Legends or Counter-Strike Global Offensive would run at the 144Hz. So the thermals are looking very good so far. Those four copper thermal transfer pipes and the two fans are certainly doing their job because gaming, pushing it hard, Intel stress test. You can see that the CPU, the maximum it has gotten up to is core max 70 degrees. You can see uh, just at the top right here. So that is about all it's going to really get up to. Maybe a little bit hotter. Ambient temperatures right now are approximately 24 degrees. I do have air conditioning on. And then the GPU, that's getting up to, you can see, a maximum of 58 degrees. So the cooling is good, doing its job. I'm happy to see this because I was quite concerned. Okay, so overall, I'm pretty happy with this laptop so far. I think the build quality is good. It doesn't have any problems with thermals. The internals look good. The cooling is sufficient. It's doing its job. Yes, there's a bit of fan noise, as you'd expect for a gaming laptop. They're using name components okay so all of the components that are in here they're all known it's not like they're using some sort of weird cloned copy brand or anything like that no that's not the case the screen the 144 hertz you can only really take advantage of that with this gpu on older titles but it's nice to have there so if you happen to be playing for example overwatch or you're into your competitive gaming counter-strike things like that then you can run the 144 hertz and keep that up and it's very smooth and that is good there the brightness of the screen as well is good so what I don't like is the touchpad, that's very poor. The speakers also sound really bad, poor, they're not that loud. Sorry I haven't given you a sample in this video, but I probably will in the next one. And really, I can't recommend it because I've had a lot of issues. If you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen. Originally, okay, I did still pay this 644 US, which is about 580 euros for this laptop, which here in Europe at least is an amazing price for the spec. But there's no Windows 10. Okay, that's not the big issue. The problem is the seller is pretty horrible to deal with. So maybe and Ben, which is the brand, the official store in AliExpress, they first sent it out with a carrier that couldn't take batteries. This is their story. So it was returned to me, and then they didn't want to ship it out again. So I thought that, hang on, I don't want to honor that price because the price now has gone up quite a bit. Uh, so they ended up finally sending it. And I want them, wanted them to send it with the original shipping method, which is like AliExpress's shipping. Which, so it'll come tax-free to me here in Spain. But they decided because of the delays, they would send it against my will, DHL Express. And when the DHL originally got this laptop, they wanted to charge me a whopping huge 635 euros tax. That's over the value of this laptop. Why? Well, the shipping value was declared by someone in China as 2,300 US. Of course, this is only worth 644. After much debate and to and fro with throwing with uh, DHL, I finally got that price down to 180 euros. So it's backfired on me, this review completely. This is now not a 580 euro laptop anymore. But if you could get it or you got it for that original price, I think you're gonna be happy for what you're getting. Decent keyboard, a lot of spec on offer. The weakness is the CPU, but you can upgrade that later on in the future if you wanted to do so. So really, I think for anyone else, when you look at the price of it now, importing this is just a huge, huge amount of risk. here. The fact that if you get one that doesn't have a problem, you have to send it back to China, no local support. The drivers you can get off their website, Windows 10 is not hard to install and also get a CD key for it as well as an extra additional cost. So those things do add up and is it worth it in the end? I don't think so, but the laptop at least for me has worked out to be a decent machine, good performance. So I will probably have a second video on this if this video does okay view wise. Uh, I will then go into a lot more detail with gaming performance, test out various different titles, keep a close eye on the thermals, fan noise 
and also give you the color space of the screen. So the Adobe RGB, sRGB, and NTSC values, of course, with that as well. So thank you so much for watching this review. I do hope to see you back in the channel. Bye for now.